I'm turning on the recording for YouTube. I would like to welcome everybody to today's live session. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Lana Shalom. I'm welcoming you to our everyday live session. Today's session, we're going to focus on something so fascinating, so interesting. It's called the wheel of emotion. You actually see it behind me. It's, uh, I'm gonna tell you more about the wheel of emotion. I'm gonna tell you how it happened about. Um, and I am inviting you. I'm gonna actually turn on my Zoom. Those of you on Instagram, well, there is no Instagram today. So I know a lot of people travel back and forth between Facebook and Instagram. No Instagram today, guys. I'm gonna try to put in a video on Instagram. Um, but Facebook is here. Okay, let me do my screen sharing, okay? I know a lot of you enjoy those presentations. And it hasn't changed much, right? You can see the wheel of emotions here. Welcome, welcome to this beautiful presentation. I wanna tell you about the beautiful wheel of emotions. Um, and more importantly, I will be talking today about the practical implications of the Wheel of Emotions. I want to be, give a big shout out to my basic students. Um, we had an amazing basics in Neurographica course, session one today. It was so invigorating. It was so amazing to see all of you guys. I know you're going to watch this later. We had a four hour straight session, so it was amazing. It was, there was so much new. And I want to tell you, every time I teach it, I discover something new for myself. I discover something new within Neurographica. It's such an amazing live method. It's constantly invigorating. It's constantly rediscovering. I constantly find, I rediscover it every time. And um, it's absolutely amazing, I find it to be. How each time it's different, how each time we do something different, right? I learned something new. I presented in a different way. I had students in this uh, session who were new students, I had students who were here from previous court, and it was so exciting to see them. I want to tell you guys, I was so excited to see you. I was so excited to meet the new students and to see your faces when you discover, when I tell you more how neurographic happens, the assets in neurographica. I'm so excited about it. Um, today's session, remember how yesterday I told you guys I'm going to give you a sneak preview of what we do in the Neurographica session. This is a part of the sneak preview. I told my students a part of the session will be uh, my live session. And I want to tell you about the Wheel of Emotions, okay? It's an amazing, amazing tool. Guys, anybody and everybody should be using it. Um, whether you're a therapist, a coach, um, any kind of helping professions, right? A teacher, love it. It's amazing with children. Um, it's just good to use as a human being, okay? My clients who I introduce this to, they say they're hooked on it. They love it. They use it every day. They're not into helping push a profession. They're not help. They're not working with clients. You know, they're not artists. They actually use this for their own self. I love using it. I use this in all range of different uh, modalities that I implement, right? I don't just implement neurographic. And neurographic is something that I'm extremely um, uh, excited about and I enjoy sharing it with the world. And that's why I do the live sessions, but slowly but surely I will be taking it to other. I have already did. I did a lot of open sessions on the in-depth uh, a study of the method of uh, hope and opono, right? I did psychology of money, which I'm planning to continue. Um, we're going to do it. Uh, I'm going to choose a week a day. I mean, a day a week where I'm going to talk about the psychology of money, continue bringing you this fascinating, fascinating topic, absolutely invigorating. Um, I uh, would love to talk more about the coaching field, right? Especially the coaching field in connection, in conjunction with Neurographica. Um, I enjoy talking about it. I enjoy teaching the specialist course, which is the coaching combined with Neurographica. Absolutely fascinating. I'm inviting everybody to join. Hello, Janet, so nice to see you. I'm inviting everybody to join um, the Neurographica method, whether you wanna do it as a beginning, as a basic student, right? The basics course, by the way, is a self-coaching course, right? Still a coaching course. I tell everybody and always, Neurographica is a coaching tool and it should be used that as everyday 
you know, device for anybody who wants to achieve harmony, distressing, who wants to achieve their goal, who wants to reach their goal, who want to bring transformation to their life, who want to bring real changes into their life. So when we do neurographic, the basics course is a self-coaching. And when you're ready to bring it to the second um, to the second level, which is a specialist, when you start sharing neurographic with others, when you start using neurographic professional within your field, you can give master classes. I'm definitely thinking it's the best way to do it. Okay. I'm going to tell you today how we can use the wheel of emotions, like I said, every day, whether it's in everyday life or it's your therapeutic or any other professional field. Okay. Let's do the presentation, okay? The wheel of emotion, the original wheel of emotion, um, it's gonna look differently than what was here, okay? It was created by the psychologist, Robert Plochek. He created the 2D wheel and then a conical 3D version in 1980. Okay, guys, this is a new, again, something new, something, such a new tool. What's 1980? I mean, I was alive in 1980, right? When you think about um, like, such prominent psychologists as Freud, as uh, Jung, you're thinking about them in the 50s, in the 30s, in the 40s, in the 20s. Um, what about the you know, body-oriented oriented therapy? Um, uh, um, um, I forgot his name, not Lowen. Um, the other guy, the original guy, um, it's just escaped my mind, okay. Um, anyway, uh, he, Again, he created the body-oriented therapy in 1940s, 1950s. This is modern psychology, guys. Robert Plochek is a modern psychologist, right? He created in 1980 as a tool for understanding his psychoevolutionary theory of emotion, okay? Take away the psychoevolutionary theory word, right? And you can just have the theory of emotions. It's about emotions, okay? Um, it's very interesting to find out that when researchers started looking into emotions, they found out over 1,000 emotions that human beings experience. Can you believe it? The range of emotions being over 1,000. It's absolutely mind-blowing. Pluchik, what Pluchik worked on, he worked on, you know, grouping, organizing, categorizing those emotions. He identified eight primary emotions, okay, which he put in fears, okay? Joy versus sadness, of course, they're opposing emotions. Anger versus fear, okay? They're trust versus dis disgust and surprise versus anticipation. It's important to note that they're paired up according to the way that human beings naturally react, you know, from like, you know, black and white kind of contrasting reactions, okay? Um, intensity of emotion in indicated color increases toward the center. This is the original Pluchik's, um wheel of emotions, okay? I just want to let you know. Okay, look at this. The inside of the circle, right, is the most intensive color. It's the most intensive emotion also, okay? As you start going outward, this is also known as the flower of emotion, okay? Because it looks like a flower, right? As you're going outwards, the flower of emotions, the colors become lighter, Okay, and the emotions as well become lighter. Let's take any emotion, right? Let's take terror. Terror in the middle, this dark brown green color, turns into fear, which is less intense fear than terror. And fear will go into apprehension, okay, which is even lighter, right? If you go into amazement, which is this dark, uh, this kind of aqua, dark aqua color, amazement. The lighter emotion of amazement is surprise and the lighter emotion of surprise is distraction, right? If you go into boredom, the purple color. Boredom is the lightest emotion, the lightest color as well in this, in this beautiful um, display. Boredom will turn into disgust. Disgust will turn into loathing, okay? Annoyance is a, a, an interesting, um, pedal to discover, okay? Each one, each emotion is a pedal. Annoyance can turn into anger and anger can turn into rage, right? The more outward you go, the less intense the emotion is, the, the, dark, the deeper you go inside toward the center, the, the more intensifying the emotion is, okay? Now, um, also Pluchi created this circumplex, right, model 
which creates a connection between the idea of an emotion circle and the color wheel. Like colors, primary emotions can be expressed at different intensities and can mix with one another to form different emotions. It's absolutely stunning. I, I need to be look at this, right? Exactly what we saw, lighter color, darker, darker, and darker. Look at this beautiful, beautiful um, uh, display that I found on the internet. Look at all the shapes and all the emotions. Look at the emotions, okay? If you start looking over here, the optimism emotion is actually, they have categorized advanced emotions and they showed what it's composed of, okay? They said the advanced emotion of optimism is comprised of anticipation and joy. Okay, look over here. Look at this cone. Anticipation and joy together bring optimism. It's really, really amazing with the graphical um, 3D graphics on the internet, the, the uh, computer graphics, what you can create, right? Love is a sum of joy and trust, right? Not something that you know you would regularly think, right? What is a submission? Is the connection between trust and I don't see well. I'm going to have to look it up. Okay. O is actual is a sum of fear and surprise. Disappointment is a sum of surprise and sadness. Remorse is a sum of sadness and disgust, right? Look at this amazing, beautiful, beautiful. Um, you can find it on Google. That's what I did. So you're welcome to intense. Look at this. They explain to you how the petals, how the the, each part of the of this uh, conical model works, right? The intensity of the emotion intensifies as the color intensifies. Absolutely amazing. I found it to be uh, so, um, for explanation and purpose, absolutely amazing, okay? Now I wanna show you the wheel of emotions more on, you know, something uh, has more shape, more emotions expressed within this wheel. And it will give you a chance to see more. I personally, there are two ones, two, two wheels of emotion that I found to be uh, the most um, versatile, the most, uh, um, that includes the most amount of emotions, okay? So there is this one and this one. I personally prefer to use this one, but when I work with clients, I actually offer them both. I have both of them printed on the paper, laminated, and they choose which one they wanna use more, yeah? And some people prefer with dark colors, I guess more intensifying, right? We just learned about the intensification of emotions. And some people prefer the light colors, okay? Um, somebody just wrote to me that they didn't get a chance to see it. So I'm going back, okay? Let's, let's, I'm gonna tell you more. So I know uh, even on my computer, I can't see it clearly. So I'm sure not everybody will be able to see it. Disappointment is the sum of surprise plus sadness. Remorse is the sum of sadness plus disgust. So I think I said that. Contempt is the sum of disgust plus anger. Aggressiveness is the sum of anger plus anticipation, right? Sometimes when, when we anticipate something and we don't get it, right? We get angry and that may lead to aggressiveness, okay? That's an interesting way. Um, opposite emotions. Joy is the opposite of sadness. Trust is the opposite of disgust, right? Fear is the opposite of anger. Surprise is the opposite of anticipation, okay? Advanced opposite emotions, okay? Optimism is the opposite of disappointment. Love is the opposite of remorse. Submission is the opposite of contempt. And awe is the opposite of aggressiveness. Very interesting to see. Color-wise, right? You can see the colors here, okay? Look over here, right? Look between the petals, we have uh, more explanations, right? More connections between the petals, right? Between interest and serenity, we have optimism. Between interest and annoyance, we have aggressiveness, right? And aggressiveness refers to this, to this petal. Annoyance, anger, rage will bring to aggressiveness, right? Contempt has to do with boredom, disgust, and loathing. Remorse has to do with pensiveness, sadness, and grief. Disapproval is distraction, surprise, amazement, right? The disapproval is somewhere between distraction and pensiveness, right? Awe is, is related to apprehension, 
right? When somebody is in awe, actually, it's interesting how all is a positive emotions, right? Mostly, again, when we say positive emotions, how is it used in literature? How is it used in uh, during, uh, you know, um, how is it used in conversation, right? Awe is a positive emotion, by the way. It's so interesting to notice that. When we say I'm in awe, it's a positive thing. If I'm talking, telling somebody I'm in awe of you, that's a big compliment. And look at all, uh, uh, um, when we say awe oh, is related to this dark green petal, terror, fear, and apprehension. That's not positive, right? Even if you go to the next one in teal, distraction, it's not such a positive one, right? Now, surprise and amazement can be, right? So all would be here related more to surprise and amazement. Again, you can look at the petal and start figuring it out. What does it mean to you? Is everything else? Right, individualizing, personalizing this would be very important. Submission, what would submission work? Which pedal? Submission can work with admiration, when you trust somebody. When you admire somebody, do you trust them? When you trust somebody, can you accept them? And that's submission, right? Once you accept somebody, you bring them in, right? You submit to them, right? Interesting, love would well go with what? Love would go with acceptance. Love would go with serenity, ecstasy, joy, serenity. Amazing, amazing. Um, the chalks, um, flower of emotions, okay? Everybody, I'm advising everybody to work with this. Uh, let me show you how I use I. This is my favorite wheel of emotion. I like it for the versatile of the emotions, the amount of emotions uh, uh, expressed here. The ease of use is absolutely amazing. When I work with a client or even myself, right, the first thing I advise is always look at the center circle, okay? In the center circle, if Pluchik identified eight, over here we have six, major emotions, okay? On the bottom, we have love, joy, and surprise, the happy ones, right? The positive one as we just uh, identify them. On top, we have fear, anger, and sadness. They're more negative, they're more sad, right? Um, as you go, I, and I always advise a client, right? Usually, by the way, I'm gonna tell you how this is relevant to Neurographica, right? Those of you who are my Neurographica students, um, if you remember when we do the reflection process, right? The reflection process is where and when and where we start, um, we start becoming aware of our body sensation, our emotions, our thoughts, and then we do a reflection. We find out what's going on with our soul, okay? On the emotions level, which is step two. A lot of time, how did I even come up with using this emotions wheel? I'm going to tell you the story. When I started using Neurographica and when I started specifically, actually, this came not during Neurographica method. I started using this during the method of Ho'oponopono when I devised my own um, uh, modeling, coaching model using the Ho'opono, based upon Ho'oponopono uh, uh, model uh, method. And a lot of times when people would say, if you remember in Ho'oponopono, there were four phrases, right? Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry, please forgive me. So when we say thank you and I love you, and I often, when I worked with, with my um, clients, I would uh, prompt them through experiencing the emotion. Again, four phrases, the same four steps, guys. The reflection process is the same in all methods, by the way, okay? We always have to go through the body, emotion, thoughts, and reflection, talking with the soul. A lot of times at the, Many times people would get stuck at the body. Not everybody are connected to their body. Not everybody are able to connect to the body and figure out what in the body is um, triggering them, right? What is triggered during a certain amount, during a certain period, uh, during any coaching session, right? Um, a big interest to me personally was when people started telling me that they have no idea um, what... They have no idea how to access their emotions. Okay? I had a few clients and they were telling me when I would tell you, what are your emotions? They're like, and they were telling me, uh, I think that person needs to do this or I, I need to behave like this. And I would explain to them that this is not emotion, but rather this is a thought. And they would be looking at me stranger and saying, isn't it the same thing? So I realized uh, there are people who are not able to connect their emotions and I started looking for a way to bring, for a tool that I can use within the sessions to allow, to assist this kind of clients to get in touch with their emotions. 
And that's when I discovered the Plutchik's wheel of emotion, the flower of emotions. And um, based upon my research, this wheel specifically was the best wheel. I personally found to be the best. Again, I use this one and I often offer to my clients this one. And um, the way we use it is that when I would say, what is the emotion? By the way, I want to tell you, I often use this because sometimes when you're experiencing high stress or something stunning, or, you know, like we mentioned before, in awe, right? I realize that my emotions are sometimes blocked, right? And I'm a very emotional person. So I do easily connect to my emotions, but certain period of time when I guess the resistance, right? When I need to access my emotions and I can't, that's what happens. I block them. And I start using this emotion. It's an amazing tool, okay? Look, I look at the emotion and I say, what do you feel? Okay, look at the middle circle, the middle, the, the central circle first, right? And the person will choose, right? The, let's say the person will choose fear, right? Then I will say, go further, right? The next level, the next uh, circle, right, is, um, is the explanation like a, a, a further kind of going deeper into the emotion of fear, okay? So most of the time, a lot of people will want to go into just stay in the center. They will go through the six major emotions. A lot of time, by the way, I have clients who will tell me emotions, but they will get stuck here. They will constantly say they experience joy or love or fear or anger or sadness or surprise. There's no versatility. And I would offer them to use the will of emotion. Look, when you use a fear, right, you go further. You look and you say, wow, how, what does fear mean to you? And they start going further. The way they would know which emotion would reflect, would work with them is what reflects within them, okay? Again, as we are into that part of the coaching session, if it's neurographic or whatever you're doing, you know, when you do the reflection, whatever step of the algorithm, when you do the reflection in the emotion part, you can say, oh, I wonder, um, do I feel scared? And you can actually see if it resonates within you, okay? Is it scared? Is it terror? Is it insecurity? Is it nervousness? Could be horror. And then look, horror turns into rage, but that's a part of the anger emotion, right? Let's say a person say, I feel insecure. And then insecurity turns into two more emotions. Look, yields into two more emotions. Look in the outer circle, right? It's inadequate and inferior. Absolutely invigorating. I'm telling you, I personally love to use it. Why? Because it gives me such a wide variety of um, emotions that I can, that I can relate to, emotions that I can um, kind of figure out, resonate with, reflect with. Most importantly, I want to tell you, um, it gives me a chance to deeper understand of what is it that really bothers me? What is it that really reflects within me? What's resonating with me? What is my real emotion, right? The word fear is such a general word. Um, besides the fact that I want to tell you this will really adds to your vocabulary, right? It's an amazing, amazing way to add more emotions, more words to your vocabulary of discussion, of um, describing something. That's something very interesting. Now, I want to teach you something else. I want to show you some other ways you can use this will of emotion, not just in the reflection process that you can use during the um, during the uh, the reflection process, during the neurographic drawing, or any other coaching session. Right? Any coaching session you do, you go through the reflection. You go through. You become aware of all the aspects of who you are. The part in Neurographica, when we bring in the six, step six, the fixing step, when you are supposed to start figuring out which shape do you want to highlight in your drawing, which, and when you highlight the shape, remember the neuro and the graphical part of Neurographica always correlate and connect to each other, right? Whatever happens in the graphical part of us, right? When we draw the picture, that's a graphical part constantly kind of uh, goes back and forth. We connect with each other with the neural part, which is the brain development, the neuroplasticity, the way our mind developed, the way our consciousness transformed and evolves constantly, right? Um, when we do the fixing shape, right? When we start highlighting a certain shape in our drawing, 
it's important that what we're really doing in our consciousness is, or rather unconsciousness, right? Deep, 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 deep subconscious is unconscious. We are bringing up, we are highlighting a certain idea or a certain thought, a certain um, connection that we want to bring up within our consciousness that relates to our goal, right? When we talk about our goal, it's very important to know that we constantly refer to it as an, on a mental level. When we do the, the, the affixing, by the way, very often I tell my students, um, when you do the affixing, you shouldn't just do it graphically by you know, making it in a, in a heavy, thick line, but you, should, can, you can also um, add color to it. Color is representation of emotions, right? Um, I remember talking about it a few months ago when we talked about archetyping stuff. Uh, in the series of videos on the seven steps of algorithm. Um, and I mentioned the book I was reading at the time, The Giver, uh, an amazing book. I'm advising everybody to read it. The book, The Giver, actually talks a lot about this utopian society that brings to life, you know, um, this utopian society that discusses how um, people in this community, right, in some communes, they did not see color. And that correlates when in the story it was revealed that people do not experience emotions. They actually get shots every single day to suppress their emotions on a biological level. And as a result, also in a verbal level, and mental level, they don't experience emotions. The main character, Jonah, he stops getting shots because he has a specific job he has to perform within the commune. And for that, he needed to experience emotions. And they show how with, when he stopped getting the shots to suppress his emotions on a biological level, he started noticing something different with his eyes and he didn't understand what it is. When he was talking with his mentor about it, his mentor mentioned to him that it's called color. Colors are related to emotions. Bring emotions into your affixing shape. It will emphasize it, it will highlight it even much more. It will bring your, that, you know, that's part, that aspect of your goal that you want to emphasize graphically, right? When you do the, the thick uh, coloring, the thick marker line, when you add it, a color to it, you bring emotions, okay? Just doing it graphically, by the way, is highlighting it on a mental level. But when you add emotions, so think about it, it's another aspect of your future goal coming true to you, right? At least first on the visual level, and then we know it becomes like kind of a fix in your mental level into your emotional level, right? It connects your mind and your heart. And what I usually do at this point, I tell my clients, look at the wheel of emotion, look at the bottom part where all the positive ones. Think, let's say, I'm going to give a very simple example, right? Let's a goal for, for a client is buying a house. When we do that affixing part, I say, look at this bottom of the wheel, the love, joy, and surprise. Tell me, find the emotions you associate yourself. When you imagine yourself sitting in your new house, you own the house already, you're there. What are you experiencing? And I take them specifically, I actually um, prompt them to go to the bottom emotions and look at the emotion that they can, um, they can choose, right? Let's say if they want to focus on the emotion of joy, they can go and they feel cheerful or happy, content, and then they go further, right? I always tell them to choose three or four emotions. We also do an amazing, amazing um, practice of integrating the emotion, integrating the resource, because the emotions that the client chooses become resources. And we do one of the um, powerful techniques that I actually utilized during the psychology of money uh, um, uh, coaching sessions where we integrate the resources. The resources that we're looking forward to bring to our goal, we're integrating them within our body, thinking about it. So on a graphical, when you graphically, right, uh, make a thicker circle, remember I said you, you imprint that impression of what your goal is going to come true on a mental level. Then when you add emotions, 
that happens on an emotional level, right? You add an emotion, you add a color. When you integrate it, there is a whole therapy. If you're interested, you can let me know and I will make a separate session on it. It's an amazing, amazing therapeutic method that you can use. It's using RPT, rapid point therapy method, where you can integrate resources into your body, right? That's on the body level. Think about it. Three out of four. We all know there are four aspects, body, emotion, mind, and soul. When you integrate three levels, and then you do the reflection process, you bring in the soul. Basically, four aspects of your fantasy, your goal, your topic, whatever it is you're trying to achieve, you're bringing it to the reality right now. And that makes it much, much stronger um, of a possibility to reach your goal, right? It brings it, you actually create some steps how you're going to reach your goal. Yeah. It's a very, very powerful tool to use, I must tell you. Um, yeah. Thank you for your, yeah, this is, uh, uh, I, I personally enjoy talking about this. I love the Wheel of Emotions. If any of you who are watching, I know most of you are watching in um, recording, let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you want to learn more, any other topics you would like to discuss during the open sessions, right? And I will be so glad to meet it. Um, I'm thanking you for your um hear me again. Thank you for your um, attention. Thank you for watching my open live video. I am wishing you a beautiful day or a night ahead, wherever you are, maybe in the morning ahead, right? And I am looking forward to tomorrow's session. Tomorrow I will go at, uh, I'm trying to remember what was on my schedule. I have to check. I believe tomorrow is fun. Let me tell you for sure. Let me look it up. Do we have it? Yes, I do have it. Excellent. Tomorrow, Thursday, will be at 1 p.m. Oh, actually, I'm going to talk about something absolutely amazing, bring you another amazing therapeutic approach, essential oils. I'm going to talk to you how I use essential oils within my neurographic sessions, and I'm inviting you to try it. It's absolutely amazing, okay? Looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Goodbye, goodbye. Have a nice day. Thank you for joining me.